Septins are a family of GTP aces that polymerize to form heteromeric filaments that perform a variety of functions in the cell. For example, Elias Spiliotis and Lee Dolat, together with their colleagues at Drexel University in Philadelphia, have previously demonstrated that septin filaments help to organize actin stress fibers in the leading lamella of migratory epithelial cells. However, we had observed that a subset of those septin elements was not completely uh, co-localizing with actin filaments. Uh, and we speculated that perhaps there is a membrane component. Um, so to test this, uh, we thought uh, to pre-extract the cells with um, mild detergent before fixing them. And what we found was that there was an overall decrease in their presence of septins at the lamella, which suggested that they're bound uh, to membranes. Cell lamellae form a large number of membrane ruffles, which can close off and internalize extracellular fluid into large intracellular vesicles called macropinosomes. Using high-resolution confocal microscopy, but also super-resolution microscopy, we observed that septins were accumulating at uh, the junctions of nascent micropinosomes and uh, vacuoles that were labeled with uh, the plasma membrane marker. The most striking observation was that in live cells where we could see uh, some of the micropinosomes forming and attaching uh, with one another and fusion, and we could see that septins would transiently accumulate at their sites of contact during that fusion event. Macropinocytosis is involved in many processes, including nutrient uptake and antigen presentation. After they are formed, macropinosomes mature by fusing with each other and with endosomes, before eventually delivering their fluid phase cargo to lysosomes. Early macropinosomes preferentially associated with RAP5 versus more mature in macropinosomes contain RAP7, and we observed that septin-2 had a higher level of co-localization with RAP7. And uh, following that, we observed that uh, there was a pretty high degree of uh, co-localization between septins and uh, this phosphoinositide, PI35, PIP2, that marks uh, mature micropinosomes. In fact, inhibiting the synthesis of PI35P2 reduced the localization of septins to macropinosomes, indicating that the phosphoinositide helps recruit septin filaments to the endocytic vesicles as they mature. So usually in, under uh, steady-state conditions in, in control cells, this nascent micropinosomes form. There's sort of a, a transient accumulation of micropinosomes, and then these uh, fusion events take place, and then they're consolidated into single vacuoles. But when we knock down septins, in particular septin-2, we saw that those uh, fusion events were diminished, and what we could see is the accumulation of uh, clusters of micropinosomes that persisted much longer, so it seemed like there was a defect in their uh, turnover. Uh, and we also saw that individual micropinosomes, once they formed, exhibit much less events of uh, fusion with one another. And we could also see that they often appear docked as they lack the ability to undergo a complete fusion event. Dolat and Spiliotis then examined whether these changes in macropinosome dynamics lead to changes in the trafficking of fluid phase cargo in septin-deficient cells. The researchers used a pulse-chase approach to follow the uptake and lysosomal delivery of fluorescently labelled dextran molecules. And what we found was that there was not a, a defect in terms of the overall localization of the fluid phase marker with uh, the RAP5 and RAP7, but we could see uh, a diminished delivery of dextran. 
to uh, lysosomes. There was almost a twofold reduction in the rate of movement of dextran to the lysosome and uh, later points of chase, it seemed like there was a traffic jam. So clearly, septins affect the delivery of a fluid phase marker dextran to the lysosome. On the other hand, overexpressing septin 2 increased the efficiency of dextran delivery to lysosomes. Dolat and Spiliotis then performed two successive pulse chasers with red and green labelled dextran and found that knocking down septins reduced the mixing of the two labels, supporting the idea that septins facilitate membrane fusion. To test this in vitro, the researchers made extracts from cells containing macropinosomes and endosomes pulse labelled with either green or red fluorescent dextran. So we can combine those post-nuclear extracts with cytosol and ATP, uh, and we can induce fusion uh, in vitro, and we can microscopically assess how many of the red-labeled membranes co-localize with the green-labeled membranes. So in order to test whether septins have a role in this fusion, we either immunodepleted the cytosol from septin-2 using antibodies or we introduced in the cytosol a function blocking antibody. And what we saw in either of those experiments was that there was a decrease in fusion between the two populations of membranes that had been labeled with different color dextrans. Depolymerizing actin or microtubules had no effect on fusion, whereas recombinant septins and ATP could induce fusion in the absence of cytosol. So what we concluded was that septin complexes have the ability to induce or facilitate fusion in vitro independently of the actin and microtubule cytoskeleton. The most simple and straightforward explanation is that uh, septins could act synergistically with snare proteins, which are known to mediate the fusion of membranes. But another even more exciting possibility is that septins promote fusion by inducing uh, membrane curvature or remodeling. So that's something that we could investigate more in the future. In the meantime, however, you can learn more about how septins promote macropinosome maturation and traffic to the lysosome by facilitating membrane fusion in the paper by Dolat and Spiliotis, published in the August 29th, 2016 issue of the Journal of Cell Biology. Oh.